I'm Max Webster. Uh, I'm 26 years old, and I am the co-founder of Bright, um, where I lead all growth efforts. Um, Bright is a new way to go solar in Mexico. Our belief is that most families want to make the right decision and use clean energy instead of dirty energy, but it's too expensive upfront to do so. So we allow our customers to pay zero pesos down uh, and to go solar while saving money from day one. Um, so it's a great thing for them, great thing for the world, great thing for their pocketbooks. So uh, I've, I've been interested in environmental activism for a long time. Uh, as a kid growing up, my mom was somewhat of an environmental activist. She would take me to these rallies in our small little Mississippi Gulf Coast town located outside of New Orleans, where she would tell me there were these companies that were putting all kinds of toxic chemicals as byproducts that they made into our water system. Um, and she would tell me, you know, it's extremely important that you understand starting a business, that's all good and great. She was an entrepreneur herself. Um, but never if it comes to the cost of your community. Uh, if you're poisoning the people around you, then what good have you ever done for the world? Um, and that stuck with me. When I was in high school, I started thinking specifically about climate change. Um, I was a student at Isidore Newman School in New Orleans, and uh, my life was very normal. I went to school, did my homework, like a normal high schooler. In one 24-hour period, that changed forever. When Katrina hit, uh, the small town that I lived in outside of New Orleans was decimated, literally flat as if an A-bomb went off. The city of New Orleans, when the levees broke, 80% of the city was underwater. So my family and I ended up moving back to Tennessee. Everyone that I knew in the city itself, in New Orleans, and also in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, where I lived, um, basically lost their homes, they lost their communities, they lost everything. And so that was a, like a life-changing uh, event for me. Um, and I started reading about hurricanes, became mildly obsessed with the topic, and saw a study back in 05 coming out of MIT talking about how climate change was going to increase the frequency and severity of storms like Katrina. Um, and it struck me that if these storms were going to be this bad in the United States, where over a thousand people died, tens of thousands of people were left homeless, not for months, but for years, many of whom I knew personally, just imagine what was going to happen in places like Bangladesh, in places where you have tens of millions of people living in extreme poverty on coastlines already. Um, and so I started thinking about climate change as not the environmental problem of our generation, but rather the human rights problem of our generation. And I said, well, what can I do to help this? Um, so I tried lots of things. I did a nonprofit was my first venture, where we wanted to put the human face on climate change by videotaping uh, communities that were most at risk and telling their stories. Um, that work was exciting, but honestly, the legal and political uh, systems, while important, moved very slowly. And I said, I want to do something to, to move faster. Um, so I started my first company, which was a crowdfunding platform for energy efficiency retrofits and solar. Um, and the idea was that we could help small businesses raise money from their communities, um, from their patrons, similar to Kickstarter, and they could use that to retrofit their buildings, put on solar panels, et cetera. Um, the idea was we wanted to actually give people a better rate of return than they can get in the banks. The problem is we had no idea how to structure a financial product. Um, and as I learned, as all entrepreneurs learn, you have no idea what you're doing until you try something. Um, so we realized we weren't going to structure a financial product. That was OK. Instead, we ended up focusing on customer acquisition for solar companies and utility efficiency programs, which is ultimately what led me later on to come to work at Bright. Yeah, I think, uh, I think technology, uh, so, so whenever I think about technology as a solution, technology always has the potential to be a solution, um, but it also has the potential to be a detriment as well, right? Like technology on its own is just, it's neutral. It's how people use it. Um, in my opinion, and there's been a lot of debate about this, you've got folks like Bill Gates saying, we need to be investing in research and development to have the next big energy breakthrough to have, for example, modular nuclear that's safe and clean. Um, I think that's awesome, but the reality is I don't think we need that yet. Um, I think investing in R&D is always a good thing, but I think we have the technologies available today, yesterday, to solve the problem of climate change. Um, I think we have the technologies available to get rid of CO2 emissions from our electricity sectors and from our transport transportation sector with no major breakthroughs. The major breakthroughs that we need, in my opinion, um, are social and financial. We need to make it socially normal for people, uh, organizations, companies, governments to move off of fossil fuels onto renewables, and we need to make it financially viable for them to do so. Um, the good news is that, particularly with solar, which is where I spend most of my time, uh, in many countries around the world, including in Mexico, it is already cheaper for many people and businesses to use solar today without any government subsidies than it is to use fossil fuels, or it is to use normal grid electricity. No subsidies. And in, in places where you have the subsidies, it's an even better deal. So you know, it's just a matter in my mind of figuring out how do we reach that tipping point? How do we unlock the social and financial mechanisms to distribute the technologies we have? The next big technologies that I am excited about that are going to make a huge difference, and again, are already in the lab, it's just a matter of making them cheap, um, are batteries. Um, having modular batteries that are cheap enough to store your solar, that's going to make it that's going to make it feasible for you to even go off grid in the future and have your solar panels and your battery and be completely clean, completely carbon neutral. Um, well, almost completely carbon neutral. Obviously, it takes energy to make the stuff. Uh, the second technology I'm excited about is electric vehicles. Obviously, in the future where you have, um, imagine a future where you have solar panels on your roof, a battery in your backyard, 
and you've got uh, an electric vehicle and you're able to charge that overnight. You can literally be your own means of power production for your home, your family, your transportation, um, and be essentially you know, carbon free. Like that, that's possible with technology today. It's just a matter of making it uh, cheap enough and giving people financial and social tools to adopt them. I think Mexico, you know, honestly, I think Mexico has so much potential and it just hasn't been tapped yet, right? Like there are incredibly talented people um, from technical and non-technical backgrounds who would kill it anywhere in the world. They just haven't had necessarily the opportunity to work at you know, an Apple or Google or a, a fast growing startup yet. Um, but that's changing, right? So with companies like ours that are bringing in you know, outside investment from Silicon Valley, um, other companies that are raising money from, you know, uh, from Mexican investors as well, you're starting to see a lot more companies start up. You're also starting to see companies scaling down here. Um, you know, companies from the US or Silicon Valley that are, that are looking to set up Latin American operations. Um, and I think Mexico is just on the tip of its own renaissance. Um, I think the, the sort of secret of Silicon Valley, if you will, is that it all works in networks, right? Like once you have one company that's successful, the founders and early employees from that company go on to found other companies. It's like, it's not rocket science. It's, it's what happens. Um, and so you just need a couple of wins here in Mexico. Um, I certainly hope we can be one of those. There's a lot of other companies that are working on that. But once you get a couple of wins, the early employees there will have the bug and I believe they'll go and start their own companies. What I would love to see even more is a generation of entrepreneurs in Mexico who are even more focused on you know, the quote unquote uh, real problems of our generation, problems around agriculture, water, energy, um, social problems, transportation. Um, I think Mexico has some unique challenges that may, you know, maybe the United States doesn't necessarily face and vice versa. Um, but I think those challenges are opportunities to build um, even better, more impactful types of companies. The biggest challenge that we faced as a startup in Mexico, honestly, is trust, by far. Um, any company, I believe for any company, that trust is the most valuable commodity you have. If your customers trust you, you will have them for life. If they don't trust you, you are literally done from day one. The biggest challenge we had in our business, so our business is we help customers go solar through zero pesos down. We essentially are a financing mechanism that makes it viable for someone on the DAC, the Mystic Without the Consumo, someone that pays 2,500 pesos or more to switch to solar for free. It takes, you know, the savings period for going solar is usually eight years. We take that to zero days. And our business model is to buy the system for them. We then split the savings with our customer. Um, but the biggest challenge we would face is trust. So I would literally, in the early days, there were only three of us in the company. I was the guy going into homes in initially the FA or CDMX now. Um, and, you know, I would look at customers and they would they'd look at me and they'd say, so let me get this straight. You're going to buy me a solar system that I pay zero pesos for, correct. I'm going to get better customer service than CFA, obviously. And on top of all of that, I'm going to save 15, 20% off of what I'm paying today. Yes. And they look at me and they'd say, okay, this is crazy. Like, who is this gringo trying to sell me a bridge in Alaska? There, there, there's no way this is, this is real. And I explained them, no, on a per kilowatt hour basis, solar is cheaper. If you're on the DAC, if you're 2,500 pesos or above, it is cheaper than what you're paying for solar today, or sorry, for uh, CFA energy today. Um, our business model is to take out the upfront risk, raise money for the system, and then we split the savings with you over a 13 to 20 year period. That's how we work. Um, but, but they didn't believe it. And we tried everything. We tried what was working in the US with similar kinds of companies, Facebook ads, Twitter ads, Uber ads, you name it, none of it worked. And it was extremely depressing for the first four months because literally the only customers we had were like family members of people that worked with us, that's it. Which by the way, friends and family, early adopters, thank you guys, y'all help startups a lot. Um, so the way that we ended up solving that challenge was by building community. Um, and at the time, I was having you know, some, some challenges connecting with the older generation in Mexico, pro you know, probably because my Spanish was pretty bad. Um, but what I realized was that young people that I knew, A, spoke English very well, and B, ha cared about environmental issues for the same reason I did. They cared about you know, making a difference in the world. So we had a small meeting of like 15 to 20 college age guys and girls that I had met or friends of their friends. And I told them, guys, I have no idea if this is going to work. We don't need you to sell the solar for us. It's going to sell itself. All we need is if you know someone who's on the DAC who pays 2,500 pesos or more for CFA, for light, um, if you can get us a meeting with them and they believe we're a real company, I guarantee you're going to be able to go solar and you're going to have the opportunity to earn some commissions and track how much impact you make. From that first meeting, we got almost 15 customers. So we're just like, ah, we're on to something. We have since grown our solar ambassador program to over 2,000 people, uh, 2,000 students primarily, actually 2,100 students now, uh, between Mexico City and Guadalajara. And our goal is to empower these guys and girls to go out there, not only to help spread solar and track their impact and make some great commissions, but also we've started a project called Bright University. We were, we're teaching these guys and girls lessons on entrepreneurship um, programming. We actually do classes on, for example, SQL, leadership management. And the idea is that if they come and they you know, contribute at Bright, we want to contribute to their lives as well. Um, and we're hope, hopeful that we're going to be able to help them launch their own companies. So 
uh, my, my philosophy on having one successful company launching more is not just a philosophy. We're actually trying to put that in action with our ambassador program um, and hopefully can help spark more successful startups here in Mexico.